For learning outcome number nine, we will be talking about bone fracture and the repair of this fracture. A fracture is any break in a bone, and fractures are named according to their severity, the shape or position of the fracture line, or even the physician who first described them. Some of the common types of fractures are shown and described here. The first one that I want to talk about is the open fracture. The broken ends of the bones will protrude through the skin. And conversely, the closed does not break the skin, as seen on this image. Then we have the transverse that occurs straight across the long axis of the bone. Next, the spiral, which bone fragments are going to be pulled apart as a result of a twisting motion. Next is the comminuted fracture, where the bone is splintered, crushed, or broken into pieces at the site of impact. And then there are going to be these smaller bone fragments that will lie between the two main fragments. Next, we have the impacted fracture, where one end of the fracture bone is forcefully driven into the interior of the other. Then next we have what we call the green stick fracture, which is a partial fracture in which one side of the bone is going to be broken and the other side will bend. Similar to the way a green twig breaks on one side while the other side stays whole, but it does bend to one side. And usually this occurs in children whose bones are still not fully ossified and they contain more organic material than inorganic material. The next one is the oblique fracture, which occurs at an angle that is not 90 degrees. And then we have Cole's fracture, which is this one over here, which is a common fracture of the distal end of the lateral forearm bone, which is the radius in which the distal fragment is going to be displaced posteriorly, as you can see over here. And the last one is what we call the POTS fracture. In the POTS fracture, the bone is going to be splintered, crushed, or broken into pieces at the site of impact. And this fracture is common for the distal end of the lateral leg bone, which is the fibula with a serious injury to the distal tibial articulation between the two main fragments. The repair of a bone fracture involves the following three phases, the reactive phase, the reparative phase, and the bone remodeling phase. In the reactive phase, the blood vessels that are located near the site of fracture, they will rupture as well. This means that blood will leak out of the blood vessels, as you can imagine, and when it does, it forms this mass of blood around the site of fracture. This mass of blood is usually clotted to stop further bleeding. And this clot is called a fracture hematoma, where hemat means blood and oma means tumor. And it usually forms around six to eight hours after the injury. Because the circulation of blood stops at the site of injury due to the formation of this hematoma, this means that the bone cells that are nearby will also die, since they will not be receiving their nutrients and the oxygen they need from the circulating blood. This mass cell death will then initiate an inflammatory response, which will lead to swelling, and this in turn will produce and additional cellular debris. What will remove the debris? Well, neutrophils and macrophages, they will start to phagocyte this debris and they will initiate this removal process. In addition, osteoclasts, they will begin to remove the dead or damaged tissue in and around the fracture hematoma by resorption. And this stage will last up to several weeks. But once the debris has been removed, it moves on to the next phase, which is called the reparative phase. This phase is going to be characterized by the formation of what we call a fibrocartilaginous callus and also a bony callus. The first step is to have new blood vessels grow into this fracture hematoma. This will allow fibroblasts from the periosteum, which is the outer connective tissue layer, 
to invade the fracture site and also produce collagen fibers. In addition, cells from the periosteum, they develop into chondroblasts and this will begin to produce fibrocartilage in this region. These events, they will lead to the development of what we call a fibrocartilaginous callus or a soft callus, which is a mass of repaired tissue consisting of collagen fibers that were produced by the fibroblasts and cartilage produced by the chondroblasts that bridges the broken ends of the bone. The formation of the fibrocartilaginous callus takes about three weeks. In areas that are closer to well-vascularized healthy bone tissue, osteoprogenerous cells, they develop into osteoblasts, which begin to produce the spongy bone trabeculae. The trabeculae join the living and dead portions of the original bone fragments, creating like a bridge. And eventually, the fibrocartilage that was initially developed by the chondroblasts is going to be converted to spongy bone, and the callus is then referred to as a bony callus or hard callus. The bony callus lasts about three to four weeks. The final phase of fracture repair is what we call the bone remodeling, where it will remodel the bony callus. Therefore, the dead portions of the original fragments of broken bone are gradually resorbed by osteoclasts, and eventually the compact bone will replace the spongy bone around the periphery of the fracture. Sometimes the repair process is so thorough that the fracture line is actually undetectable even when you do an x-ray. However, there's always going to be a presence of a thickened area on the surface of the bone that is evidence of a healed fracture. Although bone has a generous blood supply, healing sometimes takes months, and this is because the calcium and the phosphorus that are needed to strengthen and harden the new bone are deposited only gradually, and also the bone cells themselves, they generally grow and reproduce slowly. So it could take a, a bit of a time to repair a fracture.